Hello Math 106 students, we're going to go over some basics of this online course you're taking with me. I'm Karen Crossan, and you're going to log into Blackboard, click on Courses, go down to your course, it's either this one or this one for you this summer, you won't have as much stuff. Um, click into it. Um, the first thing you should do is open the syllabus and read through that. The syllabus has all the normal stuff, including a description of what kind of course you're taking. Um, my email address, which you're not going to use that much because you're going to use the discussion board a lot. Um, and on down, the thing you guys usually care most about is where your grade comes from, so we'll probably stick on that for a while. Um, it also has a schedule down at the bottom that we'll talk about some more as well. So I would read through the syllabus and keep that open while you also take the syllabus quiz. The syllabus quiz is located in, oh, where did it go? In your Blackboard course, right underneath here, the syllabus quiz. I would have it open into Windows and go ahead and begin and take it and read the syllabus while you take the syllabus quiz. So that'll help it go a lot more smoothly and you'll get everything right the first time. You are allowed to take it more than once, so it's not a huge deal. Um, but definitely take that. And as you'll notice here, the syllabus quiz is part of your grade. It's not just some random thing going on. You do actually get graded on taking the syllabus quiz to make sure that you know what's going on. I'm not actually going to take the syllabus quiz right now, um, but I do want to address a couple of things over here on the schedule. So there's basically 15% of your grade is stuff that's really, really um, very um, straightforward and easy to do that you shouldn't have any trouble with, but some people forget to do them and that's the problem. So um, after you take the syllabus quiz, um, you might want to also look at the calendar um, and do your introduction thing. I do want to look at the calendar because there is an assignment involving the calendar. So let's go ahead and look at that really quickly. Um, here it is. Boom. It's opening. Everything's kind of a Word document uh, as far as Mason's concerned. Um, they're very into using Word for almost everything. I was on my kid's computer the other day and couldn't do anything because it didn't have Word. So looking at the schedule, um, we created this to help you keep your life organized. It's really hard, especially in an online course, to make sure you don't miss any due dates. Um, and as you do things, so right now we theoretically just took the syllabus quiz and we can actually check that box. It'll let me check it now, now that I've actually hit um, enable editing on the Word document. So um, everything on here is to keep you straight on what you need to do. Um, the self-care check is, you know, <laughs> this morning my son actually made me drink water, which is part of self-care, and I did go for a run, so I can check that off too. Um, so keeping track of what you're doing the entire semester long, and I want to point out that most of the big stuff is due on Fridays. Um, every Friday you'll have a test due. Every Wednesday is when you should do a discussion board post by then. Um, but I wouldn't actually plan on doing anything on Friday. Every single thing here will be open the week prior to when it's due. So if you want to do everything over the weekend because you work full time, that will work for you. Um, I don't take things late. Um, some Most of the Hawks homework can be turned in late, but the tests are not flexible. Um, they'll be open early so you can take them early but you can't take them late. Um, and for the calendar assignment that's another thing of free points basically for not doing math. Um, you, I want you to add things to do this but you don't need to do it in Word. You can just do it paper and pencil. Um, another thing on here I want you to pay attention to, I guess I just said also, is that you should um, do things before they are due. So I really wouldn't plan on doing anything um, at 11.59 p.m. Um, on a Friday. Uh, well, nothing involving math anyway. So definitely try to do things early, not late. Okay, next. Next, I'm going to take you to the discussion board, which is where a lot of things are going to happen. Um, the discussion board we will use um, for discussion, clearly. It's also the place where you're going to do your introduction post, which we'll talk about in a second when we get there and your time management tools assignment. Um, 
and so there's a lot of stuff on the discussion board. Let's go ahead over there. Discussion board is here. Let's go to the discussion board. Um, there's an introduction introduction post, which is clearly, well, I hope clearly <laughs> outlined here. But if anything isn't clear in the directions, please, please, please post on the lot logistical and technical issues questions. Um, all math discussion is going to happen here, um, well, in different weeks of the math discussion board. Um, but any logistical or technical issue should happen here. Anything that's not math, ask me here. I'll answer or another student might get to you before me if they're up late and I'm not. Um, so introduce yourself is pretty straightforward. The one thing that I want to make sure, I guess a couple things. I put um, different categories. This is usually what I do in class is I group people by categories so that they, you can get to know other people in your major in the class because none of you are math majors. Um, and then um, under here I did post one thing that really helps the discussion board flow. It's that um, when you post to the discussion board you need to post an image. Um, when you're posting paper or handwritten work. Um, so this gives you step-by-step -step directions for posting the image. And here's two examples of images. One that was taken the way some students take them, like the first week of class, where they just are like, oh, I did this problem, I'm posting it. And then here's the same exact problem up above, but it's it's cropped appropriately. So it'd be much nicer and help things flow if you cropped things like this, because then on one page you can see like six people's contribution instead of just one person's contribution with carpet. Um, I know the student really well. I have permission to pick on their pic picture. So um, that's the discussion board for introduction. Let's go back to the main discussion board. Um, I guess I'm, usually there's a place up top. I don't know why I didn't see it. So that's the discussion board for the introduction you need to do and then logistical I went over here's week one math discussion that is from the syllabus let me show you where the grades are there um, there's also requesting office hours on the discussion board and where your time management tools assignment will be due which is making a calendar and a schedule for yourself um, which is another one of those um, easy points things so we pretty much covered the things that are the the uh, less mathematical, more easier points for you in class. Um, I did not go over the Venn diagram, which is an, an optional thing to participate in, but let me go ahead and show it to you. I think it's a nice way to get to know each other a little bit. So let's go look at that really quickly. Um, it is on the Introduce Yourself thread, there is a place to write or type, and I don't know how it's going to come up on this small thing yet yeah, zoomed in so let me there's a zoom option um, we're gonna start whiteboarding and this is a place to kind of let people know like where you fit in this categories um, if you're 20 under 20 years old you go in the blue circle if you're studying any kind of art you go in the red circle I might make these bigger in a little while um, and if that's neither of these I'm definitely not under 20 years old and I'm not studying any kind of art at the moment so I put myself out here but if you put yourself in any place that you belong on this Venn diagram that would be an awesome other thing to do while you're introducing yourself so I guess the last thing I want to say about this discussion board is to um, subscribe to it. You don't have to subscribe to the introduction if you don't want to, because then you'll get spammed with a million emails. But for logistical and technical issues, you hit the subscribe button. I already did, so let me go back to week one math. I should probably subscribe to that so that I know when you ask me questions. Um, right here is the subscribe button. If you hit subscribe, you'll know when other people are talking and it'll prompt you to go in there and talk. That is where all of the collaboration will happen in this class um, and hitting subscribe will cause you to get an email. I would definitely not recommend subscribing to um, the introduction or the um, request office hours or time management. I need to subscribe to request office hours obviously because you guys can tell me when you want to have office hours there so as far as office hours goes um, there's nothing here because you're going to create the thread saying what you want and when you go to office hours it's right here office hours click here um, you'll click in there it'll take you to collaborate um, it'll look like this if you haven't been there before and then you can join the course room and sometimes I'll create sessions if you guys have a bunch of questions and we'll all meet in there together or whoever can and then it can get recorded so that's everything about the discussion board and um, the time management assignment maybe we'll talk about as it gets closer 
um, it is definitely pretty straightforward and, and not complicated at all. So we did office hours. Um, let me show you where there's Hawks is where we're doing our online homework. This is the next thing I want to go into. So, and this is kind of where people tend to lose track of stuff in this class. So here's Hawks is the online learning system. There's all this stuff about it here. There's a really, there's a long video that the, the person from the company made telling you every little feature they have. Um, many students can just click right into it and do the different modes. Um, it goes pretty quickly into it. There's assignments that are due. The first section we're doing is 2.1 set notation. There's three different ways of doing things. Um, in the learn mode, there's another description on Blackboard, but in the learn mode, this is like you're in class. Like you should, um, here's the learning objectives you're going to do in this class. Um, here's a definition. You should probably know what a set is, like write down definitions. Um, the roster method, that's another thing you need to know what it is. Take some brief notes on a bunch of stuff. Let me, let me show you. Really silly, but like it, it's important to definitely like actually write things down in this class. When you're in the learn mode, you should write down the words that are important. There's a lot of vocabulary in math and people overlook that a lot. Um, and complement is one of the ones people get stuck on a lot. So I'm, I wrote down the word complement and I'm going to write down these different symbols they have. Let me see if I can get my mouse to show you where I'm going the, in the blue box over here. Um, and they are used in different books. So there's this one, this one, and this one. And I'm, I forget which one this book uses, but we'll find out in a second. So the complement is, um, they say it's the set of elements in a given universal set that are not contained in A. So um, I, I'm just going to say not A, not Okay, and I'm also going to draw some pictures really quickly because I don't, I know they'll do it later, but if you have the universal set and you have a set A, a bunch of stuff in A, not A, the complement of A is all the stuff outside of A. And I think of it as being complementary, two things that go together really, A and not A. I don't know if you can see my highlighting, but not A or the complement of A is the stuff outside of A, or the stuff that is not A. Cover up all the stuff that's A and you've got everything else. And I'll try to find an example problem for that. So in the first part of Hawks, when you're in learn mode, take written notes. In the second part of Hawks, after you're done with the learn mode, which is like a combination of um, reading the book and going to class, you go next into the practice mode and you try to practice some problems. And actually, here's a nice problem that a lot of people have issues with. You got to be really careful with the symbols. Symbols. First, I want to address the A complement, which we already talked about. If we're looking for A complement, then we're looking at everything that's not in A. So we're going to get rid of all these things. The E, the D, the U, the C, A, T, O, and R. And what we have left is, what we have left is this set right here, which is a complement, but this problem, you got to be really careful with all the symbols. This is why you take tons of notes. It actually asks for the cardinality of the set. So after you've done that, you need to count them. And when you count them, you get 18 elements, and that's what you need to type in there. Um, and if you think about it, there were 26 letters in the alphabet, 26, 27, 28, 29, wait, no, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. That would have given you the entire thing. So you need to make sure it makes the whole set. But enough about math for now. I'm trying to teach you how to do the course. That's not math yet. So I think I've gone over everything on my list. Um, I just really want to make sure that you treat this class like you treat a regular class and you actually do have a notebook and take notes and do stuff like that. Um, let me know if you have any questions on the discussion board. I hope this is a good um, jumping off point for you. Take notes, take notes, use a notebook and ask me questions on the discussion board. Looking forward to getting to know some of you. Thank you.